So welcome to part two of our exploration of rock, paper, scissors, lizard, Spock. Last time we saw um, that rock, paper, scissors is a pretty fun game, which basically uses a complete graph and then gives a direction to every edge. We also saw that we can generalize this to rock, paper, scissors, lizard, Spock, and that's the graph that you see right in front of you, which is really just the complete graph on five vertices with an um, every edge given a direction so that you can play this game in a nice balanced way. So I invite you to view part one of the talk just to refresh yourself with what all of this means. Today what I want to do is to show you what we've learned from part one. So what we learned from part one was that in order to make a really nice balanced rock, paper, scissors game or a generalization of that kind of a game, what we are actually looking for is a regular tournament. So we saw in part one that a tournament is just the complete graph with um, a direction associated to every edge. So we also learned that we want to use the complete graph where n is odd, and that's so that our edges can be directed in a way in which we always have out degree equal to the in degree equal to n minus 1 divided by 2. And so if we can do that, then what we have is actually called a regular tournament. And these are actually really well studied objects. In fact, you might wonder how many are there? And this question was answered in 1983 by Brendan McKay, where he showed for values of n that are odd up to 21, he calculated exactly the number of labeled regular tournaments of that order. And I've only just written down the first few of these in this table because they grow quite quickly. So there are lots and lots of these regular tournaments. And we might be wondering, well, if we have a really nice small one, could we have a method for generating a bigger one so that we don't need to look into a database of millions of these things and find a particular one that we like? What if we already have one of size three? How can we build one of size five? Well, we've already done that. So let's take a look at the next step. If we already have one of size five, how can we build one really easily of size seven? So in general, this works to take a rock, paper, scissors type game on n vertices where n is odd and build up one on n plus two vertices. So here I've taken the exact graph that we had for rock, paper, scissors, lizard, Spock, but instead of those labels, I've just labeled the vertices one, two, three, four, five. And what we're going to do is we're going to figure out how to add in a new vertex and then another new vertex to build a bigger graph that has the same properties. So right now, everything has in degree two and out degree two. Two arrows come in, two arrows go out from every single vertex. What we do is we add in a new vertex. So I've called this vertex number six, but in general, it's going to be called vertex number n plus one. And vertex n plus 1 beats all of the odd vertices that are already there. And what does that look like? It means it beats 1, 3, and 5. Okay, so it has three things going out, three arrows that go out. And it's going to be defeated by the evens. Well, there's only two evens so far, so it's just defeated by two things. You can think of it as when we put in the 6, it is even, so it's going to beat the opposing things. It's going to beat the odd. Now, what if we put in another guy? Well, we have to put in another guy because right now we don't have balanced degrees. But if we put in vertex 7 and we give vertex 7 basically the opposite property, we say, okay, 7 is odd. It's going to go ahead and beat the evens. Let's do that. So it beats 2 and 4. And of course, it also beats 6. But it gets defeated by the odds. Now we see that it beats three things and it loses to three things. And this is exactly the property that we were looking for. And if you take a look at any single one of these vertices, you will see that it has three things going out and three things coming in. Three edges going out, three edges coming in. And so that's exactly what we were looking for, a nice balanced tournament. So we can easily build up bigger and bigger and bigger ones. There is no problem with that whatsoever. And this is a really nice recursive structure. We can always take one that's of some, um, some order, some small order, and build up a bigger order as big as we like to go. Now, maybe the harder part could very well be deciding what to call these things. Because who's to say that one should be called rock and that it should beat number two, which is called scissors via some method like crushing? We don't know how to assign those sort of relationships. But somebody has figured out how to do that. 
And his name is David Lovelace. And I found this on his website, which is really fascinating. He made a rock, paper, scissors on seven. And there's a lot to do here. We see that every single option, like rock, has six other things that it has to either beat or lose to. And so we see that three of them, um, it loses to three of them and it beats three others. And he's written out some description of how these things work. So this is how things beat each other. So rock pounds out fire and crushes scissors and crushes sponge, for example. So that's pretty entertaining. And it's really fun to try to play this. In fact, you have to take a moment to play it because you really have to decide what you're going to play well before you do a countdown with your friend. In fact, if you're going to play this with your friend, it's very difficult to say, okay, ready, rock, water, air, paper, sponge, scissors, fire, and then throw your choice. I, in fact, suggest maybe saying something like, ready, one, two, three, go, and throwing your choice. Because as soon as you get to the next slide, you'll see why. This same guy, David Lovelace, has made even bigger ones. So here's an example for rock, paper, scissors, 15. And he does have the relationships between all of these things written out. But it's sort of hard to fit that onto this slide. So I will just let you read that for yourself if you're interested. Do you think he stopped there? No, he didn't. He went on and did 25. And this is really impressive. You can barely read what's happening now, but we have lots of different options like tree and moon and bowl and all sorts of fun things like that. And now you might think, okay, well, enough is enough. 25 is probably as big as you can possibly label and go ahead. But no, he didn't stop there either. What he did next was to look at a rock, paper, scissors on 101 options. And so what I'm going to do is just pull that up online because it's actually animated online. It's really cool. So if you look through the chart, there's lots of fun things like you can scroll your mouse and look at how to make the hand symbol for tornado, for example. Some of them require a certain amount of motion. Let me find one with a lot of motion. Um, this one is video games. So you need to move your hands. And if you click on, this is this basically looks like playing with a joystick. It makes sense. If you click on any one of these, then it'll open in a new tab and it'll give you all of the relationships for what video game beats. So basically we say that video game would beat math by it because it codes using math, for example. So there's lots of fun ways that this, uh, that this game can be played. And I think you can spend a really long time online looking at all of these different symbols and then playing this with your friend. It's really, really fascinating that he had the time to come up with all of these different relationships. You can see some of the original ones from his Rock, Paper, Scissors 7, where we have a sponge here, for example. But we see some pretty wild examples. I do like that he has math here. So let me just click on math, which is done using a number sign. Now, if you notice, math is kind of cool, right? Well, of course, math is cool, but it navigates the robot. But I'm a little bit unsure about the fact that it should confuse man and confuse woman and confuse police. I think that math is more fascinating than confusing, but that's a personal preference. So here is the fun game. Lots and lots of fun. There's very little chance that you're going to tie your friend because you're probably going to pick something different than your friend unless you have very similar tastes and you both want to pick computer, for example. So that's lots of fun. Anyways, let's go back to this. And I hope you see that what we can do with a complete graph is lots and lots of things. We can have tons of fun with the complete graph. And in the next part of this talk, what I want to do is take a look at these types of graphs, these tournaments, and show a really cool property that they have, which was actually, turns out, the foundations of graph theory, as you've seen if you watched my video on Bridges of Konigsberg. See you next time.